got a quick video now about electronegativity and polarity. So what I want you to think about is a typical single covalent bond. So we've got this AB molecule here and there's the shared pair of electrons between the two atoms so we've got our regular covalent bond. Now we've got a cartoon here to try and explain what's actually going on. So effectively we've got atom A attracting this pair of electrons towards itself and it's in competition with atom B attracting the same pair of electrons towards itself. So if we just have a think about what's causing that pull on the electron pair So if you remember back to your atomic stru structure lesson, in the middle of atom A is the nucleus and the charge on the nucleus is positive due to the protons in the nucleus and atom B is also the same. But because these are different atoms, they have a different strength of pull, if you like, a different attraction for the electron pair. So I'd like to think of it as like a little tug of war for the electron pair. And that brings us on to this new term, electronegativity. So electronegativity is defined as the ability of an atom to attract a pair of electrons in a covalent bond. So we'll go back to the diagram. Atom A has electronegativity X, let's say and atom B has electronegativity Y so they're pulling by different amounts it's got a picture here of the periodic table not sure how easily you can see the numbers there but basically the darker red colours are the strongest or highest electronegativity atoms so these have got the strongest pull and the yellow ones have the lowest electronegativity. Now you would always be given the values in the exam so you don't have to memorize these numbers but it's worth knowing the top three and the top three are F fluorine, O oxygen and N nitrogen. So FON. Fluorine is the most electronegative element followed by oxygen followed by nitrogen. So if we consider these two covalent molecules we've got, we've got A bonded to A and we've got A bonded to B. And I'm telling you that B is more electronegative than A. So it would have a higher electronegativity value. What you've got to try and think about is, well, where would the electron pair actually sit in that covalent bond? I'll just give you a second to think about it. So where would the electron pair be in this molecule? Well, because these are the same atom, they've got the same electronegativity value, of course, they would be exactly in the middle. If B is more electronegative than A, it is winning the tug of war if you want to think of it like that it's winning that tug of war so it's got a greater share of the electron pair so they would sit a little bit closer to the B atom and that's going to do something to this molecule so this end of the molecule is going to end up with a slight positive charge slightly positive and this end would be slightly negative because the electron density is greater around this side of the molecule than this side. So this is a slight, this, these deltas, delta plus and delta minus, stands for slight charge difference. So they're not full charges like you have in ionic compounds, these are slight charges. So this molecule obviously won't have these dipoles, slight charges, delta plus, delta minus, because 
the atoms are the same. So it's like the tug of war is between identical people. So this contains a dipole, and I've just used the Greek symbol delta there in place of the D. And so the molecule above there doesn't have a dipole in it. There's no charge difference, there's no slight charge difference in that molecule there. So we would say that this is what we call a polar bond. So there's a slight difference in the electron density across the bond. And this is obviously not going to have that. So this will be classed as a non-polar bond. There's a little task for you to have a think about. So if we've got AB and I've got some electronegativity values here for you. So you'd get this information in the exam. Chlorine, 3.16 and so on. If you had an AB molecule, so A is fluorine and B is chlorine, where would the electron pair be closest to? So you look at the electronegativity values. Well, fluorine is the most electronegative element. Remember, it's FON. So that will have, the electron pair will be sitting closest to the F. And so the polarity diagram would look like that. With the delta minus drawn on the fluorine and the delta plus on the chlorine. HF, so A is H, B is F, so 2.2 versus 3.98. So fluorine is going to draw the electron pair across that way towards itself. And so the polarity diagram would look like that now. So we've got sorry, delta plus on the H and delta minus on the F. And F, F, so in other words, identical atoms. Even though that's the most electronegative element, it's going to be non-polar. It won't have a dipole on it. So just to link in electronegativity in bond types now. So when you've got a large difference in electronegativity, then you would get ionic bonding. Okay, so if you think about it as like a tug of war, if you've got a, a really electronegative um, atom here and a, a hardly electronegative at all atom here, then that is going to win the tug of war. It's actually going to win the electrons as opposed to being able to draw them a little bit closer to itself. So ionic bonding, you actually do get full charges. Remember, ionic bondings between metals and non-metals. Metals typically have low electronegativity values and non-metals have high electronegativity values. So sodium chloride is the example I'm using there. When you've got a medium a small difference in electronegativity, then you would get polar covalent bonding with these partial charges, these delta pluses and delta minuses. So an example of that would be HCl. Finally, if you have no difference whatsoever in electronegativity, then you would have a non-polar covalent bond. So there's no partial charges, no charges at all in this molecule, and the example I'm given there is Cl2, ClCl. I found these animations on the internet a few weeks ago and I um, think they're excellent. So if we have a look at this one first of all, so the bones represent the electrons. So if you see these are two identical dogs um, and they it starts now, they're coming in there, joining together, having a fight over the bone, um, but they can't, none of them can win because they're both the same. And so effectively they've got to share those two bones between them. So effectively that's, that's your covalent bond there. We'll just watch that again. So that's a covalent bond. And that would be non-polar of course. 
I'll show you the next one. Ionic bonding. So if we see the two dogs come together, each got um, the bone. Here it is. Now the big grey dog is going to be far more electronegative than the yellow dog and so it basically wins the bone, it actually takes it off the other dog so it effectively these are electrons now, this becomes negatively charged and the yellow one becomes positively charged because it's lost its bone and they then attract each other because they're oppositely charged and you get an ionic bond so that was large electronegativity difference and then the last one is polar covalent bonding so I'll just play that through a couple of times so the grey dog is more electronegative than the yellow dog but there's not a massive difference so there's still they've both got hold of the, ele the electrons, the bones um, but the grey dog's kind of winning if you like and so they get these slight charges on them and you can see this dog here is, I wish that said delta minus there, that would have made it perfect.